Hey guys, Crypto Mike here with the Mike Check. Mike Check, is this thing on? How are you guys doing today? Uh, today, our video is going to be exclusively Ripple XRP. All right, uh, I have so much stuff, so much stuff. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible and pack all the information in and make it as simple to understand as possible. All right, guys, uh, I just keep going down the rabbit hole. I keep looking at everything and then I keep finding more and more stuff. And then I don't know where to end this video because there's just so much stuff. Um, I'm going to probably have to leave out a lot of things, but I'll probably try to get just the most striking important things in, um, in, in as short of a time as possible. All right, guys. So please take a moment to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, no notification bell. Crypto Mike is my name. Cryptocurrency is my game. Let's dive in. Now, we are going to be talking about why I think XRP's next leg up will be $9, okay? We're going to go over David Schwartz's Twitter as he drop, he's dropping clues, okay? Uh, don't discount Stellar XLM, just a little bit on that, not not much. Uh, Bearable Guy 123's Twitter and why he might be David Schwartz or strongly associated with David Schwartz. We're going to go over the XRP BTC and XRP USD charts briefly. David Schwartz's speech at the We Are Developers Convention in Germany that was about four days ago, I believe. Using Gematria to decode cryptic messages. I'm going to kind of just real briefly explain what Gematria is. And I'm going to use it and uh, show you some, uh, some, some of the cryptic messages that are put out there in our, in our faces. Um, that are just waiting for us to, to decode and decrypt. Coloring book clues starting to come out. Leafstorm Press they put out a, a tweet the other day and they showed you they showed us one of the pages, and um, it sure doesn't look like anything you would really color. So what does that mean? It's probably full of clues. We're gonna have to dive deep into that. We're gonna have to look in between the lines. Okay, guys, uh, the $20 trillion elephant, XRP at 589 The Farmer's Son by John Connell, Gematria. This, I'll explain the importance of this shortly. Um, it's a strange one. And level playing field. Let's dive in. Now, first of all, real quick, I wanted to show you, um, on my page, I have... A sky on my Twitter page I have a sky and it represents something it represents something um, the sky is the limit guys the sky is a limit for cryptocurrency okay what we are invested in what we are doing in cryptocurrency what are we doing we're invested in something in something that there is basically no limit for it, okay? There's no limit in cryptocurrency land, all right, you guys? That's why everyone is starting to get into it, all right? Now, I just noticed as a result of uh, just thinking about that, and I was just going to tell you why I have a sky in my background. I, I didn't even think about it, but I, I you know, this video is going to be a lot about David Schwartz and his Twitter and what he has to say and uh, some things on his Twitter. I just noticed he has a sky in his in his limit in his uh background too. Clouds, so that could be representative of hit of multiple different meanings, guys. Okay, it could mean something about we are going to be above the clouds. XRP is going to shoot above the clouds into the sky into the great unknown. Um, it could be that. Maybe he's saying, oh, my, his head is in the clouds. Maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's an inside joke or something like maybe it's a just a funny little quirky kind of thing like, oh, yeah, my head is in the clouds. But he's really, really logical, you guys. That's the thing I love about him. And I, I will show you in this video. Um, he is just so smart. He is so damn smart. I, I honestly I can't think of why people hate XRP and Ripple so much when – there are so many great people working for Ripple and XRP. Um, 
And the only thing I can think of is that they're just not invested in XRP and they have their, their funds tied up in something else. And that's probably why they're haters. Now, if they were in XRP, why would they hate it so much? They wouldn't because they know they would know what greatness is to come and what greatness is being formed right now with the infrastructure that's being formed. Okay. In the ripple ecosystem. All right. So, um, an XRP ledger guys. So, uh, it also could mean something about something to do with the cloud, cloud computing. Who knows, guys? But cloud computing is the future. Okay, it is part of. It's going to be big, a big part of our future. All right. Now, um, and I also believe Bearable Guy dropped it in a few of his clues. Okay, the cloud. Okay. Now let's. Uh, Okay, so I'll just go down on Dave, David Schwartz's. First of all, I want to show you something. Now, David Schwartz can control that, but it's a little harder too. But he can control how many people he's following. He can't really control how many followers he has. I mean, he can. He can like block people, but he. Why would he want to do that? Um, I thought this is interesting too. I didn't even see this. I thought that's pretty interesting. 11, 1, 11, <clears throat> 11 .1, 1, 1, 1. All right. And anyways, now you guys, David Schwartz, we've, we've noticed and we've started to uncover that he, he's not just plain and simple. Okay. On the surface kind of guy. He, he does talk in layers. Of course he's a programmer. Okay. He knows, he thinks cryptically. He thinks this, that's the way he thinks. That's just the kind of guy he is. So, of course, he's going to give us clues. He's going to talk cryptically. He's going to tweet cryptically. He knows a lot of people are following him. How many followers? 126,000. 127K followers. Just on Twitter alone. Just on Twitter. A lot of people still don't even use Twitter. Okay. Now, but he's only following 472 people. I wish he was following me. That'd be cool. Maybe someday. Hey, hey, David, if you watch this video, please follow me. Anyways, uh, or sub, sub my YouTube channel at least. That'd be cool. So anyways, now, you know me. I, I like to just dive deep into everything. Okay, so I typed this in to the Dematria calculator. Okay, he can control this very easily, how many people he's following. And if it goes over over 472 or under it, he can just follow someone else or unfollow someone and until it reaches 472. Now, when you type in 472, a striking word comes up, and it's at the top of the list. Phoenix, you guys. Phoenix. David Schwartz is hiding it in plain sight. Phoenix. Now, let me see. Um, there's another one right here in one of his tweets not too long ago. He tweets about Sony Walkman. Sony Walkman. So what did I do? You know what I did. Typed it in. What does Sony Walkman come out as? Oh, that's not it. There's another one though. There's another one that said that's a uh, Phoenix. But anyways, he does he does code about Donald Trump quite often. So this one is the President Donald Trump, and it's also spiritual awakening. Uh, could be a double meaning that he's talking about because we are going through a big spiritual awakening. So anyways, we're you know I thought that was the rising of the Phoenix one, but there I'll go over that in this video. All right, I'm gonna just rifle through these guys because there are so many okay my apologies for that one now the reason i think we're going to nine dollars as the next leg up okay there's a few there's a few reasons um now logically the logic behind it is that okay the last time we had a golden cross in xrp in 2017 Three weeks after that happened, OK, 
Okay, when last time there was a golden cross, XRP was at 20 cents. Okay. Now it had a golden cross three weeks later. It ended up going all the way up to three dollars. Let's say just roughly like three dollars and fifty cents. It was it was somewhere in between all that. It was like three thirty eight. Some people say three eighty. Some people say four bucks. Let's just say three fifty average. It went up to three fifty. Three weeks after, it was at twenty cents. Golden cross happens. Three weeks later, it's at three fifty. Now, fast forward to two thousand nineteen. Golden cross happens. Double golden cross happens. We're at forty cents. Now, logically, what would happen? You, we would probably double the last time. We would do the same thing as last time, only it would be doubled, right? We would go up the same as last time, right? Especially because there's so much going on with XRP now, even more than there was back in 2017. So that would bring us, if we doubled the all-time high from last time, especially the, the reason I say doubled is because we're double what we were to begin with. Okay, now we're at 40. Back then we were at 20. We ended up at 350 back then. Now we should end up at $7, right? Logically, probably $7. Now, we also have a ton of stuff going on, okay? We also have utility happening. XRP is being utilized now. Back then, it was just speculation. Now, it's being utilized, okay? Now, if they do have a plan to bring it up a leg up, if they have a plan to bring it up, and I believe Ripple has the plan. I believe the banks, they, they're all... In communication with each other they're, they're in communication with ripple xrp Rip, or just ripple i shouldn't say ripple xrp but they're in communication with ripple the of course you guys they have the non-disclosure agreements they have it in fine writing they have contracts with each other now i my theory is that they will bring it up to nine dollars okay we're going to go to the seven dollars which should is expected the seven dollars is expected okay then we're going to go up another few dollars because of the utilization that we have now that we didn't have back then. All right. Now, that makes sense to me. And that's just on the logic part of it. Now, now check it out. David Schwartz and Variable Guy, I believe, are coding. They have, they're coding. Okay. Um they're coding to us, you guys, in Gematria. And that's why I think maybe David Schwartz and Bearable Guy are one and the same person or deeply affiliated, okay? Very closely associated, at least. That's what I think, and I'll tell you why. When you look at Bearable Guy's um, tweets and following, he can control his tweets, and he does. He erases his tweets, and he makes sure his tweets stay at 58 he makes sure the f people he follows stay at nine. Well, of course, that's five, eight, nine, right? Now, there's also a double meaning behind that too. All right, um, there's a, a lot of meanings behind the number five, eight, nine. All right, one of them is uh, Donald Trump. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I'll I'll click on it in a little bit. But you type five, eight, nine, and you find Donald Trump, and right below that it says the storm is coming. Now, put that aside. Now, 5.8 in Gematria is XRP. When you type XRP into the Gematria calculator, 5.8 equals XRP in English ordinal Gematria. Okay? 9. XRP, 9. All right? Now, um... Right here in, in uh, one of David Schwartz's um, most recent tweets, he went, this is a very odd tweet. It's a very odd tweet. He wrote, went to Joe and the Jews for the first time today. $9 for a glass of juice. They don't take cash except for tips. Minimal premium ingredients like kiwi, lots of cheap filler, ice, apple juice. Three strikes, you're out. Taste it okay. What? First of all, what does three strikes, you're out mean? He, this is the first time he went. What does three strikes, you're out mean? So he'll go two more times. I don't know. Anyways, 
I've kind of like scrutinized over this, but the biggest takeaway I've got from it is when, that when you type in Joe and the Juice, uh, do I have that up? Let me see. I don't have it up, but I'm sure you guys have seen. I've done a few videos on it already. I don't have it up. It's fine. You just take my word for it or go, go do it for yourself. When you type in Joe and the Juice, that comes out to 58. Joe and the Juice is 58 in Gematria. 58, 9. XRP, 9. $9. XRP, $9. I believe David Schwartz using logic. Okay, we already went over the logic part. $7 plus utility, another few dollars. $9 plus, maybe, maybe more with FOMO action. Okay, we don't know that part yet. But I think they were going to set the buy and sell walls around $9 when it all comes and it all settles down. It might shoot up like crazy. It might go way above that and then come back down to nine and stay at nine for a little while. That's that might happen. Now, I think David Schwartz is telling us that. Okay? There might be a lot of FOMO action, it and then it might come settle that back down at nine. And that'll be the next leg up, maybe for a few years. I don't know. This is just a theory. Now so do you understand what I'm saying? Joe and the Juice comes out to 5.8. XRP equals 5.8 in Gematria. 5.8, 9. XRP, 9. Okay? And right here, 5.8, 9 plus. Now, another thing that might be when, okay, uh, David Schwartz brings up Donald Trump a lot in his through his Gematria. Okay, 589 is Donald Trump in Gematria. When you type in 589, the first thing that comes up is Donald Trump. Now, if you've been following the Q movement at all, okay, Q posts a lot. He There's a big following. There, there's a huge following for Q, okay? Now, there's also a poster named Q+, Plus, and... Most of the community has come to the conclusion that when that when Q plus posts, it's only logical the way they've come to the conclusion that Q plus equals Donald Trump. Q plus is Donald Trump. I think this bearable guy puzzle is paying is saying something about Donald Trump. Okay. Donald, okay, 589 equals Donald Trump plus Q plus. That makes me think Q and bearable guy could be closely associated as well. David Schwartz, Donald Trump, Q, bearable guy. Now we have the coloring book that comes into the equation. It just gets funner and funner and funner, you guys. This is so awesome. I love it. I love this, and I know you guys do too. I, so I love I love this stuff so much. I love it. Now um, let's just go to the charts real quick. Now we were hoping that it would come out of this formation here. See how it, it was trying to break. It was trying to break, and then it was just resting at the top, resting at the top. Now you guys, that's that was the buy and sell wall. Okay. That's the buy and sell wall right there. But that was the sell wall. Selling, selling, selling. People were just selling. Nothing big was happening. Someone tried to break through. They tried to break. Come on. Then it went down. Hit this this inflection point. Broke up, but not enough. Broke up, but not enough. A lot of people thought we were going to go way up. It didn't happen. We went up to the middle of this. We came back down 50% retracement. Or that actually, that's a sixty-one percent. That's the uh, that looks like sixty-one percent from this. Now, sixty-one percent is Fibonacci sequence, um, and then it went up. Now, look, we thought I was hoping we would break up from this. Um, we broke down from it. Now, you guys, unfortunately, what might happen is that we come all the way back down to the bottom of this. Um, it's a possibility. Come back down to 4,000 sats. We'll see. 
Um, you just don't know. But now, however, I could move this, and we, we are still in a sort of a triangle right now. We're still in a triangle pattern. So right there. Do that. Now, this is an extended triangle pattern. We're still in a bull, bull flag. So this is an inflection point right here. Okay, we're still outside of this. Wait, wait, wait. No, I did. I just moved that, didn't I? Um. Okay, so no, we're not outside. Now we're still right here. Ah, kind of looks like it's a difficult one. But uh, I'll show you what happened last time. Double bottom, and then that. And that was barely anything, but I think we might see another one of these double bottoms where it, you see how that slope, it was a slope. I think we might drag up upon the bottom, the bottom of this, or we could break out. It's a possibility, but we might just go all the way down and then shoot up. All right. Anyways, um, uh, look at the USD chart real quick. Now, I was hoping we would do that, and I was hoping we'd do that. No, it didn't happen. Um, however, we're in a perfect-looking uh, bear flag. I think we're going to see a little bit up pretty soon. I think we're going to be forming a pretty long little bull pennant. Did I say bear flag? Sorry. Bull pennant. Totally different. Okay, I'm just going to chart this out real quick. Line it up. Now that would make... That's the amount... Uh, that would make a lot of sense right there. Let's see something real quick. Okay, so we could be in a big bull flag. It might take till the mid mid July or the late July. Um, for us to break out. I hope not. Hope not. And this line comes from, let me see. Right there. This is not, well, yeah, we tried to kind of broke through, broke. This isn't the strongest trend line, so I wouldn't really pay attention to this one too much. It did bounce on it a lot, tried to break through, couldn't get, tried to break through, went through, tried to break through, went through right away. It, it's not the strongest trend line. Um, Ripple has not been respecting this one so much, so I'm going to erase it. But it is kind of funny how this kind of ends right, right there. Okay, so I'm going to erase that one, though. And you guys, um, we're still in a bull pennant on the XRP USD chart. All right, so it might take a little longer, but this could still happen. Let me see if I can move it. It could still happen, like, right at the very latest. Looks like it would be right there. Okay. Now, uh, so much. There's so much. Oh, yeah, Gematria. First of all, I just wanted to show you this David Schwartz video. Um I'm only going to play like a 30 second clip. And if they don't, we kind of hope they come back. And even for the payments that succeed, it's not unusual for people to call up their bank to ask if the payment succeeded and the bank doesn't know. So it, it, they'll tell you to check with the recipient and call back in a couple of days. It, it's an extremely inefficient system. And that doesn't work for things that people want to do with payments today. So what, what doesn't it work for? 
Imagine if you're a Seagate or an Amazon or an Airbnb or an Uber. These companies are- Okay, so he just named a few different companies. I'm not saying anything, but you never know when they're, if XRP is going to be utilized by uh, XR, with, by Amazon or Uber or Airbnb. Who knows? All make large numbers of small payments. But he's talking about micropayments. This is a really good speech, you guys. Really. And he's very passionate. He, he's just – this is a really good speech he made. Um, in Germany at the We Are Developers Conference, um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It was like a three, it was like almost a four hour long conference and different speakers, but um, thankfully someone put it, Aiden Trading, Aiden Trading, uh, he, he uh, what is it, condensed it and just took out the David Schwartz clip and put it, put the video up. So um, I would definitely go check that out. Watch the whole thing. He is amazing. And I mean, his energy is so awesome. He's so smart, you guys. And I would check it out, okay? Um, now, I just want to explain real quick. If anyone doesn't, a lot of people don't know what this is yet, Gematria. Let me just read this. Okay, simply put, Gematria is the practice of coding numbers into words. It is an ancient practice that traces back to at least the Hebrew and Greek languages in which they use letters from the alphabet as numbers. The idea that the system can apply to the English language gets brushed off by many. Yep. But thanks to the tireless efforts of some astute researchers, it's clear that not only does it apply, but it is used daily in news, media, and sports, with events in all three often coinciding with one another. Huh. Golden State Warriors, maybe? There may be even more to gematria than just the numbers word sum to. Attentive decoding to your own personal life, including family members, birth dates, and dates of important events, you may uncover some bewildering synchronicities that seem to transcend true randomness. Now, now that's kind of getting into more of the spiritual aspect of your life. It, it depends on what level of faith you have in, in spirituality and that. Um, so, but, but um, for what we're kind of using it for in this kind of, language in this kind of environment we're using it more on the logical um put the pieces together kind of scale not as much of a, a faith-based uh environment all right it's more of a kind of like a sensible logical kind of environment here we're trying to put the pieces together sensibly and logically now however i do definitely believe in the spiritual aspect of gematria and what what the uh interdimensional beings are trying to help us help tell us through gematria anyways let's go on the study of gematria and how it is being used against us by the elite ruling class is a young one so we hope you too will take interest in this aspect of our reality those in search of true knowledge without willing sa to sacrifice their dignity should find gematria to be among the most interesting of intellectual pursuits imaginable all right no shame in pursuing the interests of uh Gematria. Okay, so it's pretty cool, you guys. It's pretty cool. Um, where can I learn more? Gematria 85 channel. Oh, I better go subscribe. Gematria 85 on YouTube. You can always look it up on YouTube. Derek Tickery on YouTube. Zachary Hubbard's blog. Okay. All right, let's go on to let's go to the coloring book. Um, not a whole lot. Not, not not many updates on this, but uh, something that's very interesting. Where is it? Yep, right here. Okay, now on the page, of course, you guys all know about the coloring book, the official Bitcoin coloring book coming out June 28th. It used to be May 30th. They changed it to June 28th. Um, it's by Satoshi Nakamoto, okay, whose picture looks like this. Um there you go. And it's coded in in a matrix style background. And, and I thought that was interesting, especially because of uh, the Ripple Riddler doing the same kind of thing. And it also was interesting because it almost looks like Brad Garlinghouse. Anyways, um, back to the last page. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Now, it, oh, I haven't even tried this one yet, but of uh, 
a few weeks ago, it was recommending me a book right here. Let me see what this says. His first novel in more than a decade, more than a decade, a decade, that's 10 years, same time Bitcoin's been out. Okay, that, that relates to Satoshi. Not That's a little stretch. That's a stretch, I know. I'm just saying. Kari Mora. By the way, Mora, Mori Yuzan, kind of same uh, artist. The artist, Mori Yuzan, is the one that was in, the inspiration for this Wave and Ripple design book. So I think it's kind of funny. Kari Mora proves that Harris is masterful. Tori Stellar, who knows exactly how to get under our skin and into our heads. So I'm going to have to gematronize this. All right, and now I want to show you the last recommended book that was here for me was this one down here. Apologize if this video is a little long. Um, it's just uh, there's so much stuff, and there's way more than I'm even showing you, but I just can't give, put it all in a video. Now, this was recommended to me, and I don't know why, but I thought it was interesting, and I was like, why are they recommending this book out of all the books? This doesn't have anything to do with Wave and Ripple, or does it? When you type the farmer's son into Gematronator or Gematrix, I want to show you what comes out. The Phoenix. The Phoenix. Now, when you type in the author's name, John Connell, what comes out? Rising of the Phoenix. Interesting, right? Um, what is this? 472? Phoenix. Phoenix. On David Schwartz's, of all people's, front page, top of the top of his page of Twitter. 472. Phoenix. Okay. All right. The Economist cover, The Rising of the Phoenix. Okay, now I typed in David Schwartz just for kicks and giggles. I just typed in David Schwartz. Let me see what came out. The $20 trillion elephant. All right, and then it made me think, like, what's $20 trillion? Um, well, obviously, the U.S. debt is like $22 trillion, right? Now, what else is $20 trillion? If... XRP went to $589, the market cap would be $23 trillion, so about $20 trillion. All right, so we're just finding connections between everything, and um, that's why that's why you guys love this channel. Okay, Sony Walkman, Donald Trump, Spiritual Awakening. Like, he just puts random posts up, but they're not random. He's trying to tell us things. Donald Trump here. Um, Donald Trump is in his uh, Joe and the Juice one. I forgot what it was. I think it was Ice Apple Juice. One of these is, um, oh, President Donald Trump, I think, except for tips. It's just President Donald Trump. All right, guys. Um, what else? There's so much, you guys. Now, a little bit more Gematria, which is really cool. Um, we've heard this phrase a lot lately. Level playing field. Trump. Trump will level playing field. Trump seeks level playing field with the European Union. Trump urges level playing field on trade. Create a level playing field for American workers. Level playing field among states, tax reform, on Amazon, level playing field for businesses, level the playing field on steel, level playing field on tariffs. The tariffs will level the playing field. Intends to create a new level playing field. All right, it's just all over the place. Um, now, Brad Garlinghouse has been saying that too. Level playing, level, he, he said it in this speech. Um, there's a lot of news on XRP leveling the Playing field. The IMF preparing the level playing field for XRP. Globalization XRP, a level playing field. 
Brad Garlinghouse talks about a level playing field. Um, all right, so I typed in a level playing field just because we've been hearing it so much lately. And what did I find? Level playing field in Gematria. Okay, well, I found a few things. Um, but the most striking to me was June 14. But also Brett Michael Cavanaugh, that's an interesting one. But uh, June 14, we haven't hit June 14th yet. Now, just keep that date in mind. I'm not saying anything's going to happen, but if something does happen, keep it in mind, and then we will know for sure that they were telling us something was going to happen on June 14th. Okay, through level playing field, level playing field. All right, guys, this is crazy. I love it. I love it. It's crazy. I love being crazy. All right, what's this? Um, oh, yeah, 589 is Donald Trump. I'm telling you guys, it's all connected. It's all connected. All right, last but not least, I just want to show you um, Leaf Storm Press. They put out the um, one of the pages of the Wave and Ripple design book on June 8th. I got, you guys, I really think Ripple XRP is going to hit $9. Now, there is something in there. We just need to figure out what. Because obviously, what, what, are, what is there to color? It's not a coloring book. It's a puzzle book. It's a puzzle. This is much more. And they're disguising it as a coloring book. Just like Bearable Guy is disguised as just a cartoon bear. Why would anyone listen to him? Well, because the ones who listen to them are the ones who don't care what other people think. They're willing to look past that, and they're willing to deep dive. You think Nikola Tesla thought cared what anyone thought? You think David Schwartz cares what anyone thinks? No, he knows the truth. When you know the truth, you just all you do really is kind of feel bad for the people who are haters, and you just kind of feel like you wish they were there with you and. They kind of understood what you understand, but there's nothing you can do about it. But, I mean, don't hate back on them. Don't hate back on them. Just try to be understanding. There's designs in here. Now, we're going to have to figure out what those designs are. Oh, I should have brought up the email that they sent me. So, uh, a month ago, they sent me an email because I inquired about who the author was, what was the payment method, what where the funds were going to go, where the profit was going for this. Um, they told me all that. So, but they said it, it, they couldn't disclose through a non-disclosure agreement who it was. Um, they just, uh, yeah, basically told me like he, he's going to be donating all the funds to STEM, STEM research. Okay, I made ties between Bearable Guys Puzzle to Windows Identity Foundation, Microsoft, STEM. All right, there's a lot of clues. Okay, in the coloring book, um, polymath was mentioned in the description. Okay, polymath. And then a few days later, Charles Hoskinson um, was announced as working with them. So that was a big development for the polymath community to pay attention to. All right, you guys, I got to get going to keep this video short. I hope you got something out of this, <laughs> if not a few things. Okay. Uh, if you enjoy my content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that big red subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of my new videos and be up to date. Sincerely, Crypto Mike. Love you guys. Be good people. Crypto 